Welcome to Weasel Jug Gaming, and today we're going to be looking at tactics for the uh, Sun and Moon, Burning Shadows, Luminous Frost theme deck, uh, featuring, of course, we have the Alolan uh, Nine Tails. So, Alolan Nine Tails. This is not a very impressive deck. Um, it wouldn't have been a big hitter even when it released. It certainly is not a big hitter now. It doesn't have a lot of power. It's kind of gimmicky in its play style. Um, it's kind of an oddball. I really don't think it would hold up very well in today's meta. Um, I, mean, I suppose if you're going against one of the Charizard decks, it might be good. But we'll get right into it. Uh, first thing, we want to talk about our energy. This being Sun and Moon deck, we do have 20 energy. It is split. This is kind of an oddball deck with uh, 16 water. Not 16, 14 water, I should say. And 6 fire. So this is a fire and water deck. Which is a little bit of an odd combination. As always, we're going to start off with those starter Pokemons. The guys that you really hoping to start the game with, start the match with, to give you some kind of early advantage to get your hand moving, to get your deck moving. Um, this is one of the many weaknesses of this deck. There are some options, but they're not great options. So first up, we have Panpour and Simipore. If you happen to have both, it's not a bad way to start. Panpour alone is not very solid. Simipore, 90 health, water type, one energy scratch for 30 damage, not very good. But that two energy aqua reflect for 50 damage, that also allows you to move a water energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. That makes this halfway playable. For two energy, if you have both these cards in your hand, you can get that energy on this Pokemon and you can keep moving energy to benched Pokemon while you're replacing that energy on Simipore to do his attacks. Um, 50 damage by turn two, not bad. So it's okay. The uh, counter to that one is we have Panseer and Simiseer. This is the fire type version of them. Panseer, again, not very impressive, but Simiseer is kind of the, the polar opposite here. Uh, same stats, 90 health, fire type instead of water type. Has a 30 damage scratch and a 50 damage flare recharge that does the same thing, but with fire energy. So again, if you have both of these guys um, in your hand, um, Panseer and Simiseer, and you have some fire energy, it's not a bad way to go. Now, there's a lot more water energy in this deck than there is fire energy, so it's a lot easier to work with Panpour and Simpor than it is with Panseer and Simiseer. Next up, for starters, is Bruxish. Bruxish. Uh, 100 health, water type. This is kind of an oddball one. I wouldn't normally call this a starter, but this deck's kind of hurting for starters, so we're going with it. For one energy, you have the Nash Teeth, which allows, which causes your opponent's active Pokemon to become confused. That could reduce damage coming to you, reduce their effects of things like draws and whatnot that they might be trying to do, and it might start causing damage to their Pokemon while you continue to put energy onto Bruxish. If you get Bruxish to three energy, now suddenly you have a pretty heavy hitter. 60 damage doesn't sound like much, but this attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon that share the same type with your opponent's active Pokemon. So if they're running you know, a fire deck and they have three or four fire Pokemon on their bench and a fire Pokemon in their active spot, you're doing 60 damage to the active and 20 damage to each of those fire types on the bench. It can actually be a pretty big hitter there. And with only needing three energy and being a basic, is not overly challenging to get this Pokemon into play fairly early on. Um, and the confusion will hopefully allow them to last through the first couple rounds before you get all that energy stacked there. 
Now that's not it. Um, another one we want to talk about is the Horsey Cedra Kingdra line. Horsey, again, not very impressive. Um, has one energy water arrow, allows you to do 10 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. This can be a benched Pokemon. Cedra with 80 health, water type again, has a water arrow, which is an upgraded version of Horsey's. It does 30 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, can be a benched Pokemon. And you notice that's still one energy. After that, we have Kingdra. 140 health, which is pretty decent for this deck. Water type. Has a one energy Brine. This attack does 90 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. That, again, can be on the bench. And Tornado Shot, which does 90 damage to the active Pokemon. You have to discard a water energy from this Pokemon, but this attack also does 30 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So that's a total of 120 damage then. 90 to the active, 30 to the benched. So for just one energy, you can get this whole line going, and you can do damage to people that are on the bench, that either you want to weaken up before they come out to the active spot or basic Pokemon that they're putting down back there just to fill the bench, you're able to knock them out. Kingdra really is kind of the heart and soul of this deck. Kingdra is what's going to win games for you. And attacking the bench is that gimmick I was talking about earlier. There is a lot going on here for attacking the bench. The Horsey, Cedra, Kingdra line, Bruxish, they're all putting damage onto that bench, and that's really what you're aiming for in this deck, is to hit those easy targets on the bench. Um, usually I don't like to do a stage two as a starter, but because of the low energy cost, Kingdra kind of qualifies, especially with the way you can kind of combine all of their effects over time to really do some bench damage. Next up, we're gonna talk about defense. For defense, we do have, again, Bruxish, Brux-ish, that's a tough one for me to say, with Nash Teeth that causes the active Pokemon to become confused. We have the Alolan Vulpix with Powder Snow. It's a free attack. You flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. 50, 50. That's really not a great defense. First, you're flipping a coin, so you got a 50-50 chance to even put them asleep then they have a 50-50 chance to wake up. So all in all, you have about a 25% chance of that actually working for you. Um, so it's not something you want to depend on. It's more of a desperation type move just to keep things moving. Sandshrew, Alolan Sandshrew, has Defense Curl. Flip a coin of heads, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon. So that's a little bit better because it's just a straight 50-50 chance to keep yourself safe. Um, and Vulpix, even if you put them asleep, they might be able to switch them out or do something else. So Sandshrew is not bad for, not a heavy defense, but one of those I need to delay or I'm desperate to keep things moving for a little bit. Last up for defense, we have Buffalant. Buffalant's first attack there, the two dam or the two energy attack, Buffalant Head, does 30 damage. And during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage. So there's your defense. Um, you have Bruxus, Brux-ish, which is pretty good defense. You have Vulpix and Sandshrew, which are kind of iffy. Buffalant, that's dependable, but not great. Next up, we have our utility players, and there's two of them. We have Alolan Sand Slash. Alolan Sand Slash has 110 health, is a water type. Um, it has an attack, a three energy smash turn attack that does 50 damage, and then you retreat Sand Slash and put someone else from your bench out there in the active spot. That's really not a useful attack. That's not something I would spend energy on to stack up unless you have a lot of spare energy which could happen in this deck. Um, 
Lord, that's, that's about it if you have a lot of spare energy. Then when you hit those parts where you want to delay the enemy, you can at least do 50 damage, pull them back, and put out a sacrificial Pokemon. But the main reason this guy is here is the ability Slush Rush. Once during your turn, before your attack, you may draw a card. You do have two of these um, Sand Slashes in your deck. So if you're lucky enough to get both down, you get a couple free draws every turn as much as you want there. The other utility player we have is Heatmore. 110 health, fire type. A little more useful in battle. Um, has a 3 energy Searing Flame that does 60 damage. And your opponent's active Pokemon is now burnt. So that guarantees you 80 damage and could stack past that. Um, if they're unlucky twice in a row, you could be looking at 100 damage from Heatmore. The utility portion of this, though, is Odor Sleuth for two energy. Flip two coins, and for each head, put a card from your discard pile into your hand. That can be any card that's not limited to energy or Pokemon or anything like that. So you can just pick out two cards you want. It might be Trainers, might be Recovering an important Pokemon like Kingdra or Bruxish. Um, might be just getting energy that you desperately need. So Heatmore does have some utility functions there. Next up, we're going to talk about our power hitters. I say that kind of loosely because the power hitters in this deck do not hit very hard. First up is our featured Pokemon. So we have a Alolan Vulpix and a Alolan Ninetales. The Vulpix we already talked about has Powder Snow for that limited defensive ability and Icy Snow that does 30 damage, which is, isn't very impressive. Alolan Ninetales, 110 health, water type, has a 3 energy Aurora Beam that does 80 damage. Alolan Ninetales also has an ability called Luminous Barrier, but that Luminous Barrier only protects them from Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX, which you do not see in theme deck play. So it pretty much negates half the reason Ninetales exists. Um, that means Ninetales, the featured Pokemon, is a 110 health Pokemon that has a 3 energy 80 damage attack. And that's just not good. So you're not going to depend on this Pokemon to be bringing in a lot of damage for you. It's just not going to happen. Next up for damage, we have Heatmore. We already talked about Heatmore briefly, but again, that Searing Flame is okay. Not great, but okay. 60 damage plus burning. That burning could, if they're unlucky, stack over time um, to where they're doing you know, 20 damage when it's their turn, another 20 when it flips back to you. You hit them again with Searing Flame and either keep that burning going or put a new burning on if it you know, went away at some point. Um, for three energy, that's not a whole heck of a lot of damage, but it's not bad, and it's one of the things you're going to have to depend on in this deck. Next up is going to be, again, our Horsey Cedra Kingdra line. Now, Horsey, again, has that water arrow for 10 damage to any Pokemon, could be a benched. Cedra does 30 damage, again, could be a benched. Kingdra, again, is your heavy hitter. 140 health, water type, has a 90 damage attack, Brine, that attacks any of the enemy's Pokemon. And then has Tornado Shot, which does 90 to the active Pokemon and 30 to a benched Pokemon, but you have to discard an energy. Now, these guys are great because they do a lot of damage. They can do a lot of damage to weak benched Pokemon that are maybe basics with fewer hit points. Um, even some stage ones can be knocked out with a 90 and not really a big drain on energy. You don't need three or four energy on this thing to start with. Um, Kingdra can discard energy for that tornado shot attack, but A, doesn't have to, and B, it doesn't really matter when he doesn't take that much energy to get going anyways. So this is going to be your big hitter. Now you only have one Kingdra in the deck. So you're really going to have to depend on um, recovering Kingdra if he gets knocked out, 
um, pulling them back from the desk card pile, keeping them healed, those kind of things. So that's it for our Pokemon. Um, there's a lot of potential starters, but no one that's a great starter. Um, a lot of just kind of unimpressive damage dealers that really don't serve a big purpose. Um, like I said, most of your damage is going to be coming from Kingdra if you're lucky enough to get Kingdra in your hand and going. So with that, we're going to move over to our trainers. So first we're going to be dealing with our draws. Um, we do have three Hows. How allows you to draw three cards. We have two Professor Kakui's. Kakui allows you to draw two cards and then adds 20 damage to your attack this turn. Um, in a deck that hits so lightly, having Kakui around to bump up those damage numbers can really make a big difference. So try to reserve those Kakui's for attacks if at all possible. Also, don't forget about your Sand Slash. If you can get a couple Sand Slashes on the bench, you can get some free draws that way. That's it for our draw. So now we're talking about pulling Pokemon. This can be from the de from the from the deck, from the discard, wherever else. Um, first up is our Nest Ball. This allows you to pull a basic Pokemon onto your bench. For that, um, Heatmore is a good option. Buffalant is a good option. Bruxish though is going to be your primary. Bruxish and Kingdra are your two big um, powerhouses here. They're going to do most of the heavy lifting. And Bruxish is a basic. So, good one to go with. Timer Ball allows you to flip two coins for each heads. You can pull a evolutionary Pokemon out of your deck. Your big focus there is going to be Kingdra. Getting, getting uh, Seedra and Kingdra so that you can get that evolution set up and start doing some damage to the benched Pokemon. We also have a Rescue Stretcher. That allows you to choose one. Either put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand or shuffle three Pokemon back into your deck. I would highly suggest that this is going to be saved for either recovering Bruxish directly or Kingdra, Kingdra directly. Um, with Kingdra, you want to make sure that you have a Horsey and a Seedra set up and ready to go so that you can just pull Kingdra back and evolve them up right away on your next turn. Um, if you lose Bruxish, not a bad option there either. For energy manipulation, we do have an energy retrieval, which allows you to put two basic energy from your discard pile into your hand. And we also have a wishful baton. If the Pokemon that this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, move up to three basic energy from that Pokemon to one of your benched Pokemon. So all the energy is going from the Pokemon that got knocked out to the Pokemon you want to put it on. Um, the best use of this is probably transferring energy from one heat more to the other heat more. Um, if you have to, you know, you got energy that you could transfer from a Lowland Nine Tails to a, a Sand Slash if you're getting desperate, um, or energy over to your Buffalant, um, something like that. So. It's a nice way to preserve energy so that you're not losing three energy off someone. Um, there aren't a lot of great options here, though, because you don't have a lot of great Pokemon that are going to be doing a lot of great damage. Next up, we're going to look at our heals. For heals, we have a big Malasada, which heals 20 damage and removes any special conditions. Um, again, you're going to want to focus this on your two big heavy lifters, which is Kingdra and Bruxish. Another interesting one is Lana. Lana heals 50 damage from each of your Pokemon that has a water energy attached to it. So it's not just your water energy Pokemon, but any Pokemon that has a water energy attached to it. So it could even be healing heat mores. So this is a good incentive in this deck to be retreating wounded Pokemon if you happen to have Lana in your hand. 
you can rotate through some some Pokemon like a Kingdra, a Buffalant, a Heatmore, um, Nine Tails, Sand Slash, whatever you need to do. Take a hit, pull them off the front line. The nice part is a lot of the Pokemon in this deck have very cheap retreats. Kingdra is a single energy retreat. Nine Tails, single energy retreat. Um, your your Simiseer and uh, what's the other one? Um, Simiseer and Panseer. Um, no, Simipore, sorry, are both one energy retreats. Uh, Buffalant and the Heatmores are only two energy retreats. So you can retreat your Pokemon out of harm's way instead of having them do another attack and take another hit that might knock them out. You get three or four Pokemon on your bench that are all injured and play Lana. That can really make the difference for this deck to keep those Pokemon in fighting condition. Next up, we have our only utility card, which is the Escape Rope. Um, the Escape Rope forces your opponent to change their active Pokemon with one of their benched and also has you switch your active with one of the benched one of your bench pokemon so it's a it's a switch for you and a force switch for the opponent um it's just a way to maybe save one, someone on your side um pull someone out before they get knocked out but preserve their big attack so you can bring them back in um things like that so with that I mean, you've seen the deck now, you know the cards. There's nothing that's really all that impressive in here. Um, with that, we will go into our stats though. So looking at this, we have a power rating of two. We just don't have a lot of big attacks. Um, other than Kingdra, Kingdra, who can actually do, who you know, 120 damage. Um, 90 to the bench is actually kind of impressive, but otherwise you're looking at maybe 120 damage. Heatmore can do 100 at, per turn if you're lucky. Um, Bruxish can do a lot of damage if all the conditions are met. Um, few of them have a lot of hit points though. Um, Bruxish, Heatmore can easily be knocked out in one attack. Even Kingdra's got some threats that could knock him out in one attack. So... It's just kind of a hard deck to really keep moving and keep alive. And you're not going to be doing a whole lot of threatening damage to your opponents. Speed is a four. Now, speed refers to how quickly you can get your deck moving and starting to do damage early in the game. While our starters aren't great, they are pretty cheap to get moving and can start doing something. So even if you're going for a Simipor or a Simiseer, um, or you're working your way up the Kingdra line early on, you can start doing damage pretty quick for pretty reasonable energy cost. So the speed is a four. And that's one of the elements here. You're going to be jumping fast to get damage out there right away and focusing that damage as much as possible back to the bench. If you can scare off any active Pokemon back to the bench and then get someone like Kingdra or Bruxish in there to finish them off, all the better. Your agility rating is sitting at a 3. Agility is how quickly you can get other Pokemon um, on your bench, powered up, swapped in. With the low retreat cost of this deck, it really kind of helps it out. Um, again, the low energy cost for most of your Pokemon helps us out, so that's why we kind of squeak out a 3 on agility. Energy efficiency is at a 4. Um, it's a very energy efficient deck. There's not a lot of high energy Pokemon here. A lot of them are one or two energies. Um, three is the max. Kingdra can, you know, discard a lot of energy, but you know, usually what you're seeing is someone that has three or four energy and they're discarding one or two per attack. Kingdra has one and discards one, so you're not going to be spending a lot of energy here. When you knock out a Pokemon, you're not going to be losing a lot of energy with them, so it's not really a bad deck for energy efficiency. Complexity here is a two. It's not an overly complex deck. There isn't a whole heck of a lot going on, except for the fact that you do want to spend a lot of time targeting those benched Pokemon. Resiliency is a two. You don't have a lot of defense in this deck. 
Um, a lot of the defense you have is, is shaky um, or not very strong or not on an active Pokemon that we really want to be using in that way. On top of that, you don't have a lot of hit points. Uh, most of the Pokemon are sitting around about 100 health in their top forms. So you're not going to be surviving a lot of hits either. So that's why resiliency is kind of low at a 2. For type, we are sitting at a 4 here. And it's because we have a fair spread and it kind of goes across a couple lines here. Um, we have water, fire, and colorless types in the deck. So, you know, we're strong against fire. We're strong against grass. Um, you know, our, our water types are strong against their fire. Um, our fire types are strong against their grass. We are weak to grass, but again, we can answer to that with fire. Um, we do have the one colorless in here that's weak to fighting. But because we can kind of spread some damage around, we can kind of adapt to things, um, it's not the worst deck there for type advantages. You just don't have a lot of damage to begin with at all. So you really kind of need a type advantage to really make anything of this. And as far as manipulation, all we have is our escape rope. So not a lot there to mess with their deck. Um, with that, uh, I hope you uh, have a little bit better feeling for this deck. It is very underpowered. It is a very kind of niche deck that's going for a very unique gameplay. Um, I, I hope you feel more comfortable with it, though. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.